Hey! So we're making our way up to Volcan Chimbarraso and we made us some coca tea because we're already at 13,200 feet in altitude which is absolutely insane that we drove up this high and we're about to drive even higher. Yes! We have to make sure we're acclimated because you know we were just in the Galapagos at sea level for a long time so we want to move slowly with this time. I don't want to get altitude sickness. Yeah it's pretty wild up here because it's just a perfect road up to 13 and a half thousand feet so far but on this road we should be able to reach almost 16,000 feet of elevation which is by far the highest for the van even for ourselves we hiked up to about that altitude in, yeah. in Colombia at El Cocuy and there's a really good loop around Chimborazo the highest mountain here compared to that last mountain we were at is uh, a good altitude more so we're really excited to check out Chimborazo hopefully find some nice wild camping up here also around here are vicuñas which i'm so excited to find they're wild llama kind of little guys that wander around on along this road there are a lot of domesticated llamas so it seems like this is the perfect place for there also to be wild little llama babies running around <laughs> i love llamas after Kota Paxi, i just feel addicted to epic mountain views and we're just gonna chase that feeling yeah <laughs> hopefully we'll even see this mountain <laughs> honestly this is the rainy season in ecuador the other mountain we had to wake up at 6 a.m to see it but when you're waking up right there, it's not too hard to roll out of bed. Yeah. Honestly, being up here at this high elevation is no joke. Technically above 8,500 feet is where you can get elevation sickness. So the risk area for elevation sickness is 8,000 feet and above. And the worst things that can happen are pulmonary edema, which is a fluid buildup in the lungs, which can cause death. Also, you can get swelling in the brain and bleeding of the brain which can cause death. The first thing that can happen whenever you're getting elevation sickness is getting a headache, maybe having some stomach distress, difficulty breathing, especially while sleeping. Some tips that we have to not get elevation sickness is we don't jog at elevation. Instant headache and it won't go away. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's pretty crazy how fast it happens. Another tip is to breathe deep so that you get as much oxygen into your body as you can and also drink tons of water. When it comes to medicines that can help, there's actually a really ancient plant-based cure, which is the coca leaf. You can get that as a coca tea. You can get coca leaves, which you can chew. And then you have to have the leaves here, it makes your mouth a little numb. But both of these really do work. They were used by the Incans for 8,000 years, especially for helping deal with sleeping at high elevation. There's some medicines you can take which are basically for sleep apnea. It's also important to have a high calorie diet up here because you're burning a lot more energy by just being a lot higher. If all else fails, it's time to go back down. You don't have to go all the way down to sea level, just get farther down to where you might be more acclimated and wait a little bit longer to go back up. Obviously, it sucks to head down, but it's way better than dying. Oh my god, look how good this spot is how many coats I'm wearing <laughs> and right over here should be the peak somewhere over there you know try to angle the van that will get that view when it comes out but it's just so natural and apparently we even have cell service so Ooh, what do you think Emily wow best spot ever we've got enough food to stay a while haha <laughs> let's do it man we let the animals out first thing here couldn't find Graham, but of course he was just up this hill. Oh, wow. I'm so excited to see this mountain come out tomorrow morning or however long it takes. Even though you wouldn't do this 
Chimborazo is technically the highest point of land on Earth, since it's farthest from the Earth's core. It's like 6.30 now, and I'm so glad we got to see the top of this beautiful mountain. But I think I'm going to crawl back up in a bed since it's getting cloudy again. I'm so glad we got to see it. What an enormous, crazy mountain. Such a near perfect spot. The epic mountain. The cat and dog can roam free with no garbage or other animals to worry about. Plenty of solar power. We have internet service up here on our phones. We can just stay here another night, get some projects done. Play some guitar, walk around with the animals, drink lots of coffee and tea. Stay warm. Wow, what a cool spot. Not only do you have the view, of the highest point on planet Earth as defined from the center of the core. But there's these really cool eroded patterns. There's some plants here. I mean, look at this. There's even some fruits. And you can actually eat the fruits of this one. It's just a wild coffee cup. You put that back, it'll regrow. My boy. Oh, you were just hiding? You were just hiding, my boy? You wanna go on a walk? Come on, buddy. Let's go. High altitude pancakes. <laughs> and it is cold up here, guys. Hola. ¿Qué tienes? Un huesito. Buena chica. Sombrita. Sube. Oh. Oh, hola. Buena chica. Hi, handsome. How are you? <laughs> Thanks for coming in. A little too cold out there for you, huh, baby? Cat's a little more resilient. Temperature. High elevation, low elevation. The van morning ritual remains the same. Some kind of a breakfast and wordle. Let's get this, Emily. how we're gonna get out but I guess we'll just see whenever we leave if it's too wet because we are kind of off-road here whoops to stay warm we're making a lot of tea our heater it doesn't work at this altitude it's way too high and we also have these hot this hot water bottle that we filled up and then if you're like Graham you'll just go under the covers <laughs> so it hailed a lot and it looks like snow, honestly. So we're going to have a life-changing opportunity for Sombrita. Try out her first snowfall. <laughs> I bet she's gonna love it. I bet she's gonna go absolutely insane. ¿Qué es eso? ¿Qué es eso, Sombrita? Mira. Dos, tres. <laughs> <laughs> Buena chica! She's, I don't know what she thinks of it. I think she's a little confused. Oh, there she goes exploring it. Brita? No. <laughs> ¿Te gusta? She definitely notices something's up. Yeah. Mira. Go. <laughs> Vamos. Sube. Well, we decided to stay quite a few days up here, so 
We have to refill our water tank and luckily we have an extra seven gallons in the trunk that Danny's gonna refill for us. Thanks, babe. Oh yeah, sure thing. Trying to get some better internet so I could finish this app, so we left the spot, and uh, turns out there's not any better internet anywhere else. <laughs> this restaurant is the highest restaurant in Ecuador. It's so cool that we got to come here. We told him that we're from the U.S., and he showed us the U.S. flag that someone put up here only a week ago, and we know the people that did it. Well, we know one person that did it. Probably I met a guy with a really cool camera. <laughs> it turned out he was filming a uh, chimborazo attempt next. I had so cold. Oh man, this sucks. I was just backing up for a minute and we dropped like a ton of oil all of a sudden. And you don't see it leaking, but we're definitely low on oil. So, well, let's pour some in. Okay, so Emily's gonna pour in the oil, we'll see. So we're not 100% sure what's going on. Either way, it doesn't seem prudent to drive up to 16,000 feet with the current state of things. <laughs> hmm. So it might be the altitude that we're experiencing, or that the oil pan is experiencing. I don't know, I guess we'll have to look it up. Well, right now it says we're at uh, 14,260 feet. Oh no, I just backed up a little bit to test if anything was leaking. And sure enough, there's a nice little puddle of oil. Not a huge long rainbow like there was up there at least, but we're gonna have to head down to town and get it looked at. So Danny went under there again and checked the oil. We're on a more flat spot. And now that we're backing up after sitting there for about three minutes, there's no oil on the ground. And also he didn't see a leak. How was the dipstick? Dipstick was good. It wasn't like over the top. Right. But it was like on the textured portion full. So, I'm yeah, it's kind of a mystery. It's definitely related to the altitude. Yeah, I'd say it's the altitude. Maybe we just hit our maximum altitude with the van, 14,000 <laughs> feet. I mean, that's pretty, that's pretty good anyways. <laughs> yeah, it's nice to be testing the limits and actually uh, come up against a hard wall for some certain reason. <laughs> I mean, obviously we're gonna keep a close eye on it. We're I still wanna go to a mechanic, especially in such a high altitude region. Stuff about this. Honestly, we don't really mind heading down because, like I said, we need some internet. Um, I was starting to feel the elevation more and more as time went on. So I got the transmission fluid cap off and cleaned this really well and tested it. And we have plenty of transmission fluid in there. So at least that's not the cause. But it just seems to be leaking on that side of the engine. So yeah, we'll have to see what's going on with the mechanic. Oil level's still looking solid, so this will continue down. Are you gonna come down, Grimmy? Morning, we're at the mechanic this morning. And despite Danny's tons of research that he told the mechanic, the mechanic thinks that maybe the oil that's on the engine and transmission is from someone accidentally pouring it on there. So he's just cleaning that off, which is not a bad idea. I don't mind that at all. So Danny talked to our friends last night and also did a lot of research himself. Where the oil filter sits is very pr prone to cracks and leaks and gaskets wearing thin. So they think that that is the thing that's leaking and putting oil all over. So there's a lot of cars with that same part. So we're hoping that it would be a little bit easier to find. It is a faulty part because it's made out of plastic so it's not very sturdy. But we did find an aluminum one online. So maybe we're gonna get the aluminum one sent down here. If he still doesn't listen to us, we might move on to another mechanic. 
which means that I'm just gonna keep everything kind of clean in here until <laughs> and just like ready to go at all times which is really funny <laughs> but good morning so far at least we made it to a mechanic and it's not as grave as we thought it was dripping down here in the center just running down from somewhere look at that dirty beast and over here it seems okay so I'm gonna ask him if I should just clean all that off so we can kind of tell what's what in this beast but we won't be able to get any spare parts today he says okay so they cleaned the engine so now we're gonna turn it on and see where it leaks I guess it paid off I bought all this extra oil when we had that other accident so they haven't seen a leak yet okay so it's probably not as serious as we thought that's great i mean yeah. it must have just been pulling somewhere and you went backwards and yeah i mean it's definitely an oil leak but yeah maybe it's not that bad yeah i think we're gonna have to wait until your sister can bring that i'm sure she'll be excited about us paying for a check bag <laughs> <laughs> the car buddy connect that always saves my butt joss he in uh, vandiver automotive spokane washington great mechanic he mentioned that with this pentastar engine which is in jeep a lot of chrysler vehicles and, and dodge and ram something that fails a lot around 150,000 miles is the engine oil filter housing the engine has really hot oil your coolant's cool and the piece where they mix is plastic in these engines it's prone to failure that's where emily's sister who's going to come visit could bring it because this oil leak it's they're not able to see anything yet so it's like a slow leak but you have to disassemble the engine to check so these guys are, are making sure they can check everything else before taking apart um you don't have to take apart like a lot of the engine but you know you have to get the cover off and it is a lot of steps we're so glad this leak isn't as bad as we thought but we're hoping my sister can bring down some parts for us let us know what you think about this video in the comments it's free and helps us out a lot we just started our patreon hop on over to join our family we'll see you guys next time